Good morning. Welcome to Morning Prayer at Good Shepherd Episcopal Church to Cuesta, Florida on this Friday, the 7th of October, 2022. There's a lovely day here in South Florida, Southeast Florida. My name is Ian Anderson, and I am a member of the Good Shepherd Daily Office team, the ministry that brings you morning and evening prayer. This service is streamed live on weekday mornings at 9 a.m. exclusively on Zoom. If you are watching this after the fact and would like to participate in the live service, you can access both the service leaflet for the service and the link for the live service by going to the prayer page under the worship dropdown list of our website, goodsheponline.org. You will look for today's date for the bulletin and immediately above it is the link to the live service. So we've got quite a crowd this morning. Good morning, Debbie. Good morning, Joan. Good morning, Pam. Good morning, Sherry. And good morning, Wendy. Thank you so much for joining me this morning for morning prayer on this, the 7th of October, 2022. So why don't we begin? The Lord is in his holy temple. Let all the earth keep silence before him. Dearly beloved, we have come together in the presence of Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, to set forth his praise, to hear his holy word, and to ask for ourselves and on behalf of others those things that are necessary for our life and our salvation. And so that we may prepare ourselves in heart and mind to worship him, let us kneel in silence and with penitent and obedient hearts confess our sins, that we may obtain forgiveness by his infinite goodness and mercy. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry, and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. The mercy of the Lord is everlasting. Come, let us adore him. Our invitatory psalm this morning is a portion of Psalm 95, Venite Exaltamus Domino. We shall say the Venite together in unison. Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great King above all gods. In his hand are the caverns of the earth and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his for he made it and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee and kneel before the Lord our maker. For he is our God and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. The mercy of the Lord is everlasting. Come, let us adore him. The Psalms appointed for this morning are Psalms number 140 and number 142. We shall say the Psalms together in unison with a slight pause between them. Deliver me, O Lord, from evildoers, Protect me from the violent, who devise evil in their hearts and stir up strife all day long. They have sharpened their tongues like a serpent. Adder's poison is under their lips. Keep me, O Lord, from the hands of the wicked. Protect me from the violent, who are determined to trip me up. The proud have hidden a snare for me and stretched out a cord, a net of cords. 
they have set traps for me along the path. I have said to the Lord, you are my God. Listen, O Lord, to my supplication. O Lord God, the strength of my salvation, you have covered my head in the day of battle. Do not grant the desires of the wicked, O Lord, nor let their evil plans prosper. Let not those who surround me lift up their heads. Let, evil, let the evil of their lips overwhelm them. Let hot burning coals fall upon them. Let them be cast into the mire, never to rise up again. A slanderer shall not be established on the earth, and evil shall hunt down the lawless. I know that the Lord will maintain the cause of the poor and render justice to the needy. Surely the righteous will give thanks to your name, and the upright shall continue in your sight. I cry to the Lord with my voice. To the Lord I make loud supplication. I pour out my complaint before him and tell him all my trouble. When my spirit languishes within me, you know my path. In the way wherein I walk, they have hidden a trap for me. I look to my right hand and find no one who knows me. I have no place to flee to, and no one cares for me. I cry out to you, O Lord. I say, you are my refuge, my portion in the land of the living. Listen to my cry for help, for I've been brought very low. Save me from those who pursue me, for they are too strong for me. Bring me out of prison, that I may give thanks to your name. When you have dealt bountifully with me, the righteous will gather around me. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. In our Old Testament reading this morning, we continue from the book of the prophet Micah. Hear this, you rulers of the house of Jacob, and chiefs of the house of Israel, who abhor justice and pervert all equity, who build Zion with blood and Jerusalem with wrong. Its rulers give judgment for a bribe. Its priests, its priests teach for a price. Its prophets give oracles for money. Yet they lean upon the Lord and say, surely the Lord is with us. No harm shall come upon us. Therefore, because of you, Zion shall be plowed as a field. Jerusalem shall become a heap of ruins, and the mountain of the house a wooded height. In days to come, the mountain of the Lord's house shall be established as the highest of all the mountains, and shall be raised above the hills. People shall stream to it, and many nations shall come and say, Come, let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the house of the God of Jacob, that he may teach us his ways, and that we may walk in his paths. For out of Zion shall go forth instruction, and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. He shall judge between many peoples, and shall arbitrate among strong nations far away. They shall beat their swords into plowshares, and their spears into pruning hooks. Nation shall not lift up sword against nation, neither shall they learn, learn war any more. But they shall sit, they shall all sit under their own vines and under their own fig trees, and no one shall make them afraid, for the mouth of the Lord of hosts has spoken it. For all the people walk, each in the name of its God, but we will walk in the name of the Lord our God forever and ever. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our response to our Old Testament lesson is a song of praise, which we shall say together in unison. Glory to you, Lord God of our fathers. You are worthy of praise, 
glory to you. Glory to you for the radiance of your holy name. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Glory to you in the splendor of your temple, on the throne of your majesty, glory to you. Glory to you seated between the cherubim. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Glory to you beholding the depths in the high vault of heaven, glory to you. Glory to you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We will praise you and highly exalt you forever. Our New Testament reading is from the Gospel according to Luke, and in it we hear Jesus' parable of the sower. Soon afterwards, Jesus went on through cities and villages, proclaiming and bringing the good news of the kingdom of God. The twelve who were with him, as well as some women who had been cured of evil spirits and infirmities, Mary, called Magdalene, from whom seven demons had gone out, and Joanna, the wife of Herod's steward, Chusa, and Susanna, and many others who provided for them out of their resources. When a great crowd gathered, and people from town after town came to him, he said in a parable, a sower went out to sow his seed. As he sowed, some fell on the path and was trampled upon, and the birds of the air ate it up. Some fell on the rock, and as it grew up, it withered for lack of moisture. Some fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up with it and choked it. Some fell on good soil, and when it grew, it produced a hundredfold. As he said this, he called out, let anyone with ears to hear, listen. Then his disciples asked him what this parable meant. He said, to you it has been given to know the secrets of the kingdom of God, but to the others I speak in parables, so that looking they may not perceive, and listening they may not understand. Now, the parable is this. The seed is the word of God. The ones on the path are those who have heard, then the devil comes and takes away the word from their hearts so that they may not believe and may be saved. The ones on the rock are those who, when they hear the word, receive it with joy, but they have no root. They believe only for a while and in a time of testing fall away. As for what fell among the thorns, these are the ones who hear. But as they go on their, their way, they are choked by the cares and riches and pleasures of life, and their fruit does not mature. But as for that in the good soil, those are the ones who, when they hear the world, word, hold it fast in an honest and good heart, and bear fruit, and with patient endurance. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our New Testament canticle is Dignus S, a song to the Lamb, which we shall say together in unison. Splendor and honor and kingly power are yours by right, O Lord our God. For you created everything that is, and by your will they were created and have their being. And yours by right, O Lamb that was slain, for with your blood you have redeemed for God from every family, language, people, and nation, a kingdom of priests to serve our God. And so to him who sits upon the throne and to Christ the Lamb, be worship and praise, dominion and splendor, forever and forevermore. The Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. 
he will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Suffrages A. Show us your mercy, O Lord, and grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world, for only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care and guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten, nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God, and sustain us by your Holy Spirit. The Collect of the Day is the Collect for Proper 22. Almighty and everlasting God, you are always more ready to hear than we to pray and to give more than we either desire or deserve. Pour upon us the abundance of your mercy, forgiving us those things of which our conscience is afraid and giving us those good things for which we are not worthy to ask, except through the merits and mediation of Jesus Christ, our Savior, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. And today we commemorate Brigitta of Sweden, mystic and prophetic witness, who died in the year 1373. O God, who beholds all things and whose judgment is always mercy, by the example of your servant, Brigitta of Sweden, give to us in this life the vision of your kingdom where Jesus Christ is all in all, that we may pattern our earthly lives on things heavenly, where our lives are hidden with Christ in you, who with him and the Holy Spirit live and reign forever and ever. Amen. A Collect for Fridays. Almighty God, whose most dear son went not up to joy, but first he suffered pain and entered not into glory before he was crucified. Mercifully grant that we, walking in the way of the cross, may find it none other than the way of life and peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen and a call up for the mission of Good Shepherd. Loving God, you sent your only son, Jesus Christ, that we might have hope of eternal life and the Holy Spirit to sustain us in our faith in you. Give us grace to be a beacon of that faith, hope, and love in this community, that we may radiate the transforming power of your love to everyone, everywhere, who live and reign together, one God, forever and ever. Amen. We pray for our brothers and sisters in Christ throughout the world and in every denomination, but particularly those throughout the Anglican communion, remembering today especially the Diocese of Nakuru, Kenya, the Right Reverend Joseph Muchai, Bishop, and the Diocese of Nambali, Kenya, the Right Reverend Ma Robert Magina, Barasa, Bishop. We pray also for our own Diocese of Southeast Florida and our Bishop, the Right Reverend Peter Eaton and his wife, Kate, and the Episcopal Church, the Most Reverend Michael B. Curry, Residing Bishop and Primate. Lord Jesus Christ, you stretched out your arms of love on the hard wood of the cross 
that everyone might come within the reach of your saving embrace. So clothe us in your spirit that we, reaching forth our hands in love, may bring those who do not know you to the knowledge and love of you for the honor of your name. Amen. We pray for our own parish family and those dear to them. Remembering today especially Georgia, Howard, Allison, Rob, Roger, Phil, Keith, Kelsey, Wendy, Joyce, Peter and Mirabel, and Bunny. We pray also for ministries of current activity, remembering especially the search committee, that God's call to the next rector of Good Shepherd may provide us with a faithful pastor who cares for us and equips us for our ministries. And for Hear These Words podcast with special guest star Mary Lou Crefasi this week, that members of Good Shepherd may gain insight into the coming Sunday's scripture readings. And now if you'd like to say it with me, please say the Good Shepherd Parish Prayer. Almighty and everlasting God, make our parish of Good Shepherd truly a community of prayer and belonging. Raise up in our midst the resources and leadership which will enable us to act upon what you would have us do in this place and in a ministry of love and concern for others. Open my mind and heart to discern what you would have me do through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. At this time, I invite your own petitions, intercessions, and thanksgivings, either shared with all or held in the silence of your hearts. All righty. So Letty asks prayers for those who are affected by the hurricane, especially those in Southwest Florida. Thank you, Letty. And we should also remember those in Puerto Rico and those in Cuba, island nations who are neighbors of ours, who've also suffered in this way. So let us pray for all who are suffering because of circumstance and especially those in the path of these hurricanes and the wake of these hurricanes. Oh, merciful Father, you have taught us in your holy word that you do not willingly afflict or grieve the children of men. Look with pity upon the sorrows of your servants for whom our prayers are offered. Remember them, O Lord, in mercy. Nourish their souls with patience. Comfort them with a sense of your goodness. Lift up your countenance upon them and give them peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And I would also like to uh, say a prayer for the uh, elderly couple who I assisted this morning. Uh, the uh, water uh, pipe going into their water softener had broken off and uh, they earnestly entreated me uh, for, uh, for assistance in turning off the main to the house so that water would not gush down the uh, street as it had been doing for uh, probably about a minute by the time I arrived during my walk. So let us pray for the aged. Look with mercy, O God, our Father, on all whose increasing years bring them weakness, distress, or isolation. Provide for them homes of dignity and peace. Give them understanding helpers and the willingness to accept help. And as their strength diminishes, increase their faith and their assurance of your love. This we ask in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. So they were able to show me where the water main was, but they didn't have the strength to turn it off. And thank you, uh, Letty. Let us pray for healing, prayers of healing for Carol and also for our friend Bill. So let us pray for those whom we love. Almighty God, we entrust all who are dear to us to your never failing care and love for this life and for the life to come, knowing that you are doing for them better things than we can desire or pray for. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And let us pray for 
the uh, Good Shepherd Episcopal Schools Fall Festival and Pumpkin Patch, which takes place on Saturday. So let us pray the prayer for schools and colleges. O eternal God, bless all schools, colleges, and universities, and especially our Good Shepherd Episcopal School, that they may be lively centers for sound learning, new discovery, and the pursuit of wisdom. And grant that those who teach and those who learn may find you to be the source of all truth. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And on this beautiful morning, uh, and in celebration of uh, our hallowed hike, which takes place at 6 p.m. on Saturday night, for those of you who want to go. And if you don't feel you have the strength to go on the hike, you can still go to the parking lot. And after the hike, they will have Holy Eucharist. You can join them for that. So let us pray for joy in God's creation. Oh, Heavenly Father, you have filled the world with beauty. Open our eyes to behold your gracious hand in all your works, that rejoicing in your whole creation, we may learn to serve you with gladness for the sake of him through whom all things were made, your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised your well-beloved son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions, as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth, and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the God of hope Fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you for joining me today for morning prayer here at Good Shepherd Episcopal Church. Uh, may you have a blessed weekend. Uh, enjoy it. Hopefully we'll have great weather again during the weekend. Those of you going on the Hallowed Hike or participating in the Fall Festival tomorrow, Enjoy that too. And of course, as you go into the world today and greet your neighbor, be kind to him or her. One never knows what another is going through in this world. Amen. <laughs>